Illyrian mythology. Aspects of Illyrian mythology. The theoretical and conceptual overview it goes without saying that the above topic first of all requires a fair, objective approach, a correct theoretical and conceptual basis. In formulating the topic, we intend to highlight not only aspects of the genuine mythology of the ancient Illyrians, but also synchronized mythological phenomena of other ancient mythologies of the Balkan Mediterranean area, which took place in the mentality of the Illyrians in natural way, transformed within this mindset in the form of an active mythological consciousness in harmony with the Illyrian pantheon. In the current state of studies in this field, which unfortunately are still very insufficient and full of a priori or incorrect theses, it is difficult to make an exhaustive treatment. This requires multifaceted, interdisciplinary research work. The sources of knowledge are the writings of ancient authors, who also described aspects of Illyrian cults and myths, albeit partially and fragmentarily, archaeological discoveries, etc. It must be said that the review of the data of the ancient authors from a more advanced methodological lens, the proper use of these data in the function of the above topic is the primary task for the researcher in the field. The archaeological discoveries made especially in the second half of this century in the vast territory of the Illyrians in the Balkan Peninsula, as well as those of the Illyrian enclaves in southern Italy in Magna Graecia, have created a repertoire of facts, data, which make it possible to prove the Illyrian mythology as a separate entity, as a separate branch of the tree of ancient European mythologies. The systematization and organization of the Illyrian myth cults is undoubtedly a difficult thing, but not impossible. The Illyrians, as one of the largest and most ancient peoples of our continent, have participated in the great cultural and spiritual processes that have taken place since the beginning of the centuries of prehistory and prehistory until late antiquity. In this extremely long curve of time, the Illyrians have had a history of their mythology, the study and analysis of which enriches knowledge, Illyrology. Illyrian mythology is a cultural product of a special kind, but one should not forget not only its historical character, but also the fact that this mythology was not a kingdom of myths in itself, or a decorative scheme of pure ancient thought. But a living practice, born and closely connected with the life and economic and political history of the Illyrians, with their actions in relations with their neighbors, with art, ethnography, ethnopsychology, philosophy and science of ancient thought, which represents relations the unity of continuous contradictions in the long historical process. The Illyrians, as an ethnos, began to form in the Enneolithic, complete features take especially in the Bronze Age. Ethnogenesis is connected to the Illyrians with the dimension of the earliest and archetypal mythological images. It is understood that in the analysis of the ethnogenetic process, the analysis of the birth of myth cults is also present together with the ethnogenesis of initial forms that survive in later, subsequent ages, develop, complete, create a mythological consciousness in itself. The ethnogenesis of the Illyrians is a great problem of science, not only of albinology, but also of Balkan studies and European studies. The deciphering importance for extremely early epochs of history and the complete, exhaustive clarification of this ethnogenesis is understood. Knowledge in this field has achieved successes that we would generally call unshakable. This is especially due to the Albanian archaeological science, which for the first time defined a clear theoretical elaboration of the matter in question, argued by undeniable archaeological facts. So as a terminus antiquem, we will take the data of archaeology for the cultic practices, since the Enneolithic era. The Illyrian man is one of the first ancient Europeans, who creates in his imagination the mythological universe not separated, but also in contact with the creativity of other peoples of the continent. This Illyrian as such, generalized as a type of a certain people, also inherits from the mythological images of a still older population with which it is creatively elaborated into an entity that is conventionally called Pelasgians in today's archaeological literature. What he inherited from the Pelasgians is the subject of a separate study which does not fall within the scope of our study. A periodization of time in very general lines, which also serves as a kind of chronology and stratification of the life of Illyrian mythology, we would define as follows, I, the period from the Enneolithic to the process of the birth of urbanization, as the phenomenon of the slave-owning society in the Illyrians, too. The Illyrian civic period of the city and the Illyrian state until the Roman conquest, 2nd century AD, 3. 
the period under Roman rule until late antiquity, 6th century AD. In the first period, the influence of a phenomenon with a Mediterranean character is important, that of Greek colonization, which, among others, created original relationships with the spiritual culture of the Illyrians, because this culture reacted creatively to its ramifications of some Greek myths in the Illyrian territory, as creations of this territory. Like all peoples of nature, wrote Karl Parkey, one of the initiators of the study of Illyrian mythology, the Illyrians had formed their faith, their gods, according to their spiritual inclination and ethnic nature, according to the character they had, the state of the place and the work they did. They were polytheists. Polytheism is the essence of the Illyrian mythological system, something in common with other ancient peoples. This polytheism has its own development, from the myths of matriarchy to those of patriarchy, of the creation of a pyramidal system of a main god, or of a main, elite, of a certain number of other gods. Polytheism reflects the spiritualization and deification of the spontaneous forces of nature, of man's relations with nature, and then takes a basis of images born in ancient social life, of the forces of society itself. In this way mythology is institutionalized, created as an official polytheistic religion. This is what happened during the time of the Illyrian state. The Illyrian kings had a certain official pantheon, put at the service of the Illyrian state and dynastic power. A number of foreign and Albanian scholars have helped in the studies of Illyrian mythology. We will mention G. Hani, F. Knox, K. Pi, L. Freind Landon, Pizan, Q. Trahelka, D. Sergejevsky, M. Sway, A. Evans, Lambersi, K. T. E. Myasevii. A special value is represented especially by the generalizing thematic works in this field by the prominent Illyrian scholar A. Stipv such as Illyrian's history, life, culture, and ancient cults in Illyria. This erudite author has special merit for the collection and systematization of the myths and old cults of the Illyrians according to a rich, diverse bibliography of Illyrian studies. Among our researchers, Professor has done pioneering work. Ekram Kabej, giving us a model with his 1938 study, Jana and Zona, and with a multitude of articles on the spiritual life and popular demonology of Albanians as heirs of the Illyrians. Studies that have enriched the knowledge of Illyrian mythology, seen in connection with the beliefs of the Albanians, have been done by M. Turta, as well as the archaeologist H. Saker. The researcher Zef Murdita wrote about ancient Dardania and Illyrian myths there. A guiding theoretical basis for the study of Illyrian mythology is the book of Professor Alfred UCI. What is new that the studies of Illyrian mythology bring today is not only the most complete presentation of the mythological repertoire, enriched especially by the archaeological subject, which had a dynamic character, but also the optics, the conceptual side, qualitatively new, far from the schemes of mechanical acculturation, which presents the Illyrian mythology of other people simply as a reflection of other neighboring or borrowed mythologies, as well as away from the artificial. Fetishizing theory of Hellenocentrism, which does not accept the internal creative process and excludes a priori the simplicity and existence of an Illyrian mythology. This Hellenocentrism even goes so far as to deny another well-known mythology of antiquity, the Roman one. On the other hand, a multitude of schools of today's structuralist positivism, of neo-positivism have created other schemes, mechanistic, of pre-born universal archetypes, of structures in themselves, mystifying the formal side, disconnected from the original creations of each people, especially small peoples. In our century, there is a revival of irrationalist theories regarding the nature and function of myths, their relationship with society, life, art, etc. Only multidisciplinary methodology creates the possibility of real scientific achievements, far from speculation, in the mythographic studies of peoples. Iconic cults Iconic cults are among the earliest in any people. Parkey was the first to point out that among the Illyrians, in the beginning, the deities were without names, that is, spiritualisms, imaginative fetishized concepts of the forces of nature. This lack of naming was based on iconism, that is, the absence of a picture, icon, etc. So, we have a very extreme stage, when it has not yet passed into a personalized, defined mythological world, even among symbols of an ornamental, graphic character. We have very little data for this phase. The Pelasgians also had such an iconography. 
Herodotus, Historii, Book 2, 52, notes that the Pelasgians were in the habit of sacrificing everything to the gods, as I learned at Dodona, and they had no name for them, as no one has heard them call them by names. They generally called them gods, because, having set all things in order, they kept the laws of the universe. They came to know the names of the gods too late. The absence of the names of the gods among the Illyrians, more precisely among the pre Illyrians, is earlier than the absence of a mythologically defined figure for them. Archaeologically, an old Neolithic rite has been observed, that of burying the dead within the territory of the settlement, in a sleeping position, with legs together, without funeral cutlery. This cult, which survives into the early Bronze Age, was associated with the consecration of anonymous powers that protected the settlement. It is an extremely early Illyrian cult, for which even the name is missing, and it is iconic. Iconism, it seems, is a mythological phenomenon which continues even later, even when the system of deities named and completed iconographically is created. Cults have their graphic representation initially in the form of decorative symbols, which is a higher stage than iconism. Symbolism of cults in geometric ornamentation. Archaeological excavations have brought to light a very rich material of objects which carry symbols of a geometric ornamentation which, without a doubt, have been connected with early cults and myths. This geometrism is a certain stylization, stage of abstraction, which is of particular importance for the worldview and mythological mindset. Geometric ornamentation is documented in the prehistoric period and in all subsequent periods. The vessels, the Illyrian ceramics of the Enneolithic, bronze, and iron period are full of geometric symbols, which make up the Illyrian ornamental repertoire. Of course, the Illyrians have introduced certain magical, cultic meanings into these symbols. A. Stipv has catalogued some of these geometric motifs, which had such a meaning for the Illyrians. Such are the spiral, the double spiral, wavy lines and zigzag lines, the disc, the circle, concentric circles, the swastika, the triquetrum, triquetrum, which differs from the swastika in that instead of the four turned spines there are three, the cross, the sign, S sign X, etc. The main part of them is related to lunar and solar symbols. The double spiral relates to the simplified graphic interpretation of the very ancient motif of the tree of life. Whereas the S sign, according to J. Deschelet, is nothing more than an inverted half swastika line. This symbol was found on a stone monument in the section with a sacral function. The sign, X, which he has on his chest and a baked clay figurine of the 3rd century AD from Durs, usually symbolizes the sun, people who wear this sign have a liturgical function, an important position in their environment. Graphic symbols are a parakeet, language, a kind of, alphabet, of the representation of ancient cults. Yes, not in every case we will definitely see cultic meaning in every geometric motif. It is a fact that geometry lives up to our time. Undoubtedly, today it has completely lost its ancient mythological meaning and has a purely graphic, ornamental character. Such a thing has started to happen even in antiquity. Geometricism is an ancient form of a primitive, though stylized, iconography of cultic worldviews among the Illyrians. A separate grouping is occupied by those geometric motifs which form a complex, a figurative whole, based on a strict symmetry, characteristic of Illyrian geometric art. These are documented especially in the armor of the Illyrians, in their shields. Analyzing two armors of the 6th century CE found in a mound of Uraka and another in a mound of Mat, S. Islami sees in their system of geometric motifs a number of solar symbols, stars, birds in flight, in sigmoidal forms, where it appears, almost the synthesis of Illyrian geometric art, presented with a purely Illyrian syntax and spirit. In this armor, the decorative system probably represents a kind of Illyrian cosmogony, also as a mythological concept to represent the sky and the earth, the heavenly bodies, the sun and the stars, placed in the center of the armor's field. Attempts have been made to see in the symbols of Illyrian geometric art a multitude of depictions of still unanthropomorphized mythology, as Stipsevici says. Or, he continues, perhaps it is the result of the strict social organization, patriarchal, which left individuals very little space for picnics outside the boundaries of aesthetic and social thoughts imposed by this society. Dendromorphism and zoomorphism among the Illyrians. 
Dendromorphism, deities in the form of trees, is also another early form of Illyrian mythology. For this we have a main evidence of the very big mythological role played by the Dodona Oak among the Molossian Illyrians. Homer in the Iliad, episode 16, lines 234 to 235, mentions Dodona, as well as its soothsayers, who never wash their feet. In this case, foot washing should be understood as an ancient rite, an integral part of the ceremonial. In Dodona the sacred oak formed, in fact, an outdoor temple, or, more precisely, a pre-temple. Here the oak was not the only cult, the sacred wood, which was later associated with an anthropomorphized, supreme deity, such as the Dodonian Zeus. Initially, the wood of Dodona was a kind of obelisk of the mythological worldview of the Molossians, a kind of center of the world, with the function of the omphal cult. The oracles here deciphered the movements of the leaves, to which they gave symbolic meanings. Apparently, the cult of wood was also related to that of the flight of birds, in which the Dodona Molossian fortune tellers found symbolism of the future of the events that would take place, of a conversation and a sacred dialogue with the deity or with the secret world of the deities of their religion. We also find an echo of the cult of trees, that is, of dendromorphism in the symbolized representation of the gardens of Alinoy on the early coins of Durs. The origin of this cult is Illyrian Epirus, specifically Corcora, according to the Homeric story about King Alinus and his immortal, magical, fabulous garden. And from Illyrian Epirus is the legendary story, mentioned by Eliani, where it is said that in the Epirote region there was a place with a sacred forest dedicated to Apollo, where there were sacred snakes which were believed to be from Python. In the forest, the snakes fed the naked virgins. If the snakes were friendly to the virgins, accepting their food, this meant that the year would be fertile, if they refused them, the year would be dry. The sacred forest dedicated to a deity presupposes, first, an earlier cult of the deity itself, so we have echoes of dendromorphism. We find similar echoes in the floral decorations of ancient mosaics or other monuments. This is evident in the floral decoration of the mosaic conventionally called the Beauty of Durs, 4th century BC, which points to a local interpretation of the immortal gardens of the Hesperides, as well as in the double floral motif on the silver pafter of Lower Celsi, which is a masterpiece of Illyrian art from the 3rd century BC. This motif, called the Anthemian, Lotus and Palmettes, has similarities with Corinthian terutical works of the 6th century BC, but what is more important is that the figure of the dragon serpent in the scene of the pafter in question tends to be transformed into a floral decoration, the same as on the armor that has the figure of the river god Hebrews. This transformation of zoomorphic to floral motifs has been noticed in Illyria, but also in Thrace. We have here a symbiotic relationship between dendromorphism and ancient zoomorphism. Regarding zoomorphism, we have some typical evidence among the Illyrians. One of the most important figures of the old Illyrian region is definitely the snake. Xtype V has collected a detailed material about the role of this sacred animal, which was worshipped for a long period of time. There are even scholars' opinions that the snake is a homonym of Illyria itself par excellence, because they have seen in the root of the word the etymology of the snake itself as a thonic cult. Another sacred animal figure among the Illyrians was the horse. The scholar of the 2nd century before our era, Festus, wrote that Neptune was formerly called Hippias, a word that many philologists derive in connection with the Albanian word, Mihaib, Mikalaru. In the oldest mythological depictions, the entrance of the seas is also given in the form of a horse. Festus records that, for this reason, every nine years the Illyrians sacrifice four horses to the sea. In some monuments, Illyrian ships with horses' heads on the masts are also depicted. Such a ship was made on the bronze cobblestones of an Illyrian warrior found in the necropolis of Glasenac, dating to the 6th century BC, as well as on a scene with Piscean and Illyrian ship matches found on a monument in Nolivera near Passara in Italy. Elements of zoomorphism, related to totemism, are also found in some Illyrian names. Thus, from early on the name of Ulcin, Ulcinium, Ulcinium, was seen as the Indo-European name of the wolf. The figure of the wolf as a totem, as a heraldic symbol, appears until recently, in the 14th century, on the seal used by the lords of Ulcinj, the medieval Albanian princes Balshai. The name of the Illyrians Tolante, 
corresponding to the Greek translation Heladon, has led Anton Majeri to explain this word with the Albanian Talandush, Dalandish. G. Hani first saw in the name of the city Delminium the root of the Albanian word Delm, sheep. In the same way, the Greek translation of eels has been found in the name of the Illyrians Enkeleg. A totemic figure is also the ox. Since the Enneolithic, in one of the mounds of Pashok, an ox skull has been decorated in the central grave, the most telling evidence of the Illyrian terabolism. In this context, the deer should also be mentioned, as a sacred ceremonial animal among the Illyrians. Modern philology has seen in the name of Brindisi an ancient Illyrian Albanian word, Brendion, horn, horn. Finally, a large place in the ancient mythological beliefs in Illyria is occupied by the figure of the goat, which was often used for sacrifices to the deities. Whereas in medieval Albanian folklore, goats, especially the three sacred goats of the fairies, are not only an attribute of their strength, but also their permanent companions, they are reminiscent of the suite of Artemis with great influence on pastoral life. Zoomorphism has been a companion in the long mythological process and has not been separated from those figures which at a higher stage are presented with human features. Illyrian Anthropomorphic Deities Mediterranean polytheism, like Illyrian, is anthropomorphized. The human figure has been a mask, a representation of deities even much earlier than is thought. Thus, in the Paleolithic and then in the Neolithic, the first anthropomorphized deities were created. In the Amtriux, the central figure is the plastic representation of the woman, in schematic forms, in the form of a plow, in the form of a violin, or in the form of protruded parts of the body, steatopigical. Such statuettes have been discovered in abundance in the lands of Illyria. These are related to a very ancient cult, actually Mediterranean, with that of the great mother, Magni Mater, which symbolizes the fertility of the earth, of nature. These statuettes, in addition to schematism, often also have a naturalistic shape. In fact, such images are encountered even earlier than going into the geometrical Illyrian art, which belongs to the early Iron Period and which required, in fact, a kind of abstraction in the reading of symbols. From the first period, from the origins of the birth of Illyrian mythology to Illyrian civic life, we have especially two or three artistic testimonies definitely connected with cults. One of these is the cave painting of the Lepenica cave, dated by M. Korkuti as being from the Enneolithic period. Here the human figure is shown schematically as in many other contemporary cave paintings. We are of the opinion that even in a cave painting in Rubik, published by Professor D. H. Chuteriki, we do not have a medieval creation, but on the contrary, an Enneolithic painting similar to the painting of Lepenica. This is seen in the almost complete similarity of the human figures and other details. The true meaning, the full meaning of these anthropomorphic representations almost schematized in geometry today is incomprehensible. It is certain that in them the Illyrians gave their religious worldview and, perhaps, the refigurations of their earliest deities. These paintings are the first iconographic panels of the Illyrian cult. It is the task of knowledge to clarify their message so far, since the Enneolithic. A third cave painting, belonging to the early Iron Age, is that of the train, published for the first time by M. Korkuti. We have in it a scene of hunting knights chasing deer. Although at first glance it looks like a secular, profane motive, scholars think that it should also have religious meanings. In this painting, N. Saker sees similarities with the scenes of the Dawn Stele in Italy, which belong to an ethnic Illyrian environment. These Stele have scenes with riders as in the painting of the train, and even N. Saker sees this motif in the scene of the lower Selka Pafta, as well as in some Pafta with the same motifs with riders discovered in Gostalia. These, the knights and deer, also have cult meanings, related to a certain iconography of Illyrian myths on both sides of the Adriatic coast. A special anthropomorphized deity figure is that of a man sitting with his elbows resting on his raised knees, with the palms of his hands close to his mouth, as shown in the upper part of some bronze pendants discovered in the Barkai Mounds of in the district of Kora, which dates back to the century. 9 to 8 before our era. Archaeology ZH, Andrea has published these pendants and distinguishes several variants in them. This figure of a sitting man also has a cultic meaning, 
but today nothing definitive can be said about this meaning that it had for the Illyrian inhabitants of the Corca Plain. It is the archaeological evidence that tells us about a transition towards a complete anthropomorphism of religion in the Illyrian world. In the period of the birth of Illyrian civic life until the Roman conquest and especially in the first centuries of our era when, although under the Roman rule, provincialism takes off and we have a great renaissance of the Illyrian cults which fits Marx's statement that, in the Roman pantheon you found all the deities of other nations. The archaeological evidence is richer and based on them we can reconstruct something from the Illyrian mythological pantheon. We are talking here about authentic Illyrian myths and cults, some of which are also given between Interpretatio Grecii e Romana. A separate group is occupied by synchronized Illyrian and Greek, as well as Illyrian Roman myths and legends, about which we will talk and then in more detail. Deities of the Illyrian Pantheon we are briefly giving a number of Illyrian deities, documented among the archaeological monuments in the Illyrian countries of the Balkans and Illyrian enclaves in other countries. Redo. The central entrance, perhaps the most important among the Illyrians of the civic and flourishing period of the Illyrian state. The iconographic defiguration in the form of a boy with a courgette-type hat, given in profile, is also preserved. The portrait is associated with the figure of the Illyrian lembe and the dolphin as attributes of the deity. This is how it is documented on the coins of Skodra and Lees. The character and definition of this entrance was made by archaeologist H. Saker. It is the official entry, apparently supreme of the Illyrian state at the time of Ghent. After the destruction of the Illyrian state, the cult of Redden survives in the coastal territories and is witnessed even in the first centuries of our era. We put forward the opinion that it is not only the entrance to the sea, but something more and was definitely connected with the cult of the Illyrian royal family, not only from the time of Ghent, but also earlier. The fact that we find the name of this high as a geographical toponym at Kepi Redini, north of Durs, makes us think that here we should also look for a place of his cult, possibly open, in nature. Medori. He was an Illyrian warrior. This is also important. The center of the cult of Medori is Ryzen, but perhaps also the monumental tombs in Lower Celsi, where the attributes of the high are carved, such as the Illyrian shield with its characteristic concentric circles and the helmet. Also, these attributes appear in numismatics. We also have an iconographic representation for this. He is a knight. He is depicted riding a horse, with a spear in his left hand. In the well-known scene of the Lower Celsi Pashtu, in fact, in the knight, who has the dragon snake behind his back, we have Medori. In this scene, the cult of Medori is connected with the cult of the waters, the figure of the serpent sea monster, the fish, etc., that is, with the cult of Redden himself. We do not know exactly the relationship between these deities, they have parities, or hierarchical relationships between them. One thing is certain, both of these deities coexisted and were at the top of the pantheon. Regarding the nature of the Medor horsemen, it should be said that various scholars have seen an Illyrian variant of the cult of the Thracian horsemen or the Danubian horsemen. There are also opinions that the oldest prototypes of the cult of the Dioscuri, which are presented iconographically as knights, should also be seen in the scene with two knights facing each other, as in the lower Celsi Pashtu or in the Gostilia belts. Medori in reality has an Illyrian identity. He is a knight dressed in typical Illyrian armor, unlike the Thracian knight, the Danubian stellar knights or the Dioscuri hand knights. Medori and Redni have ethnically Illyrian names. Illyria. Eponym of the entire ancient and great Illyrian people. Appian tells his legend, Illyria, the son of Polyphemus and the nymph Galatea. The sons of Illyria were Enkelu, Autori, Dardani, Medi, Tolanti, Perabi, while the daughters were Partha, Deortha, Desara, etc., from where they came the Tolents, the Perabe, the Enclae, the Dardanians, the Parthians, the Dasarets, and the Darce. They say that Autori had Panan or Pan as his son. It is a legend collected at the time of Roman rule and is not given in its literal, original form. However, the fact is important that among the Illyrians the mythological awareness of descent from a distant, common ancestor, from a first man, was alive. 
It is interesting that this demiurge man of the Illyrian tribes is born from the deity which is not coincidentally associated with the sea. Both Polyphemus and Galatea are associated with the hewn of the seas. So, Illyri is the son of the environment and the maritime cult. The maritime cult of the Illyrians is not only attached to the name of Redden, but also to other names of Illyrian deities. Illyria, as the eponym of the Illyrian people, has been honored in a special way, but we don't know how long ago. Some scholars have seen in the name of Illyria a root, illo, with the meaning, to turn, to wrap, that is, of the thonic snake. Among the Indo-European Hittites, the snake is called Ilajanka, which also connects it with the name of Illyria. Others explain it as the name of the inhabitants of the Lumti Illa, tributary of the Danube. Regardless of the explanations of the philological and etymological character, the name of Illyria is the one that has named like no other name the great community of Illyrian tribes. But there is another legend which has come to life among the Illyrian tribe of angels and initially had radiation in the areas of central and eastern Albania, especially around Lake Linid. According to this legend, Cadmus and Harmonia, when they came and settled with the angels, gave birth to a son, who was named Illy. This legend is told by Apollodorus, the scholar of the 2nd century BC. It is to be noticed something. Apollodorus' legendary story was recorded nearly four centuries before Appian's story. Apollodorus refers, apparently, to a more local and spatially limited opinion. So the legend of Illyria, he says, is more of an angelic legend. It is a combination of a well-known Greek myth, as we will elaborate below, with a local Illyrian legend. In fact, Appianus is the author who has devoted an entire study to Illyria and the Illyrians, and his records correspond to a great revival of the Illyrian element in the 2nd century AD, which is associated with a provincial Illyrian renaissance although in conditions under the shell of the Roman occupation. It is precisely in this time loop that the names of the Illyrian deities Redden and Medo appear again, in dedicatory inscriptions, in epigrams. The Illyrians play important roles in the hierarchy of the Roman Empire, occupying important positions from the highest in power. In this spirit, it is understandable that some very ancient legends are reborn in the mythological consciousness of the Illyrians. It is Appian who records the cyclical legend of Durs, an Illyrian creation among the most prominent in the mythology of South Illyria. In the same way, his legend about Illyria as the chieftain, the greatest great-grandfather of the genealogy of the Illyrian tribes, speaks of a unique thought, of a common axis of the mythological thought of the Illyrian tribes as a whole, which transcends local borders and other legends bordering both the legend of the founding of Old Durs and the legend of Illyria are connected to the maritime world, to the myths of this world, myths understandable even for the Illyrians of the interior of South Illyria and not only for the coastal Illyrians. Even, in the Greek names of Polyphemus, son of the god of the seas, and Galatea, nymph of the sea, which are given as the mythical parents of Illyria, we should actually see corresponding Illyrian deities of maritime mythology with names that have not been preserved. In its structure, the legend of the birth of Illyrians told by Appian is similar to the birth of Dira, from the seas and the daughter of Epidamne Melissa, who has a nymph name, Appian thus brings the main legends of the Illyrians, who have been revived in his time. Diana Candave. That is, Diana of the Candavas, known Illyrian tribe. In the vicinity of the Parthians, the Candavians had an important temple of Diana noted in the Tabula Putingeriana on the Ignatia Road along the path east of Scampa, Elbasan. Indeed, the topography of the spread of this cult has also been found in Diocles, in Montenegro, where a dedication, Diana e Augusti Candavensi, was made on the altar. The Cult of Diana. This name, as elaborated in his study by Cabbage, gave the name Zona to the Illyrians, it refers to a local goddess with the Roman name or the Greek name Artemis. Researchers have linked some reliefs with the image of this local goddess to the cult of vegetation, fertility, and seasons. Dionys Dualos H.Y. of the Paeonian Illyrians Scholars have been drawn to its setting, which was explained by Jokli and Cabbage with the Albanian word Dej, Miuda. Dionysiac ceremonies, where people drank and got drunk, also presupposed in it. Apollo Doroni. H.Y. of the Illyrian Paeans. This name appeared on the coins of King Lycu of this tribe, 
around 335 to 295 BC. Coins show an ox feather on the river. Based on this fact, Cabet makes an etymological analysis of Duran, linking it to an Illyrian subtribe, the Derens, an agricultural polem. It is probably one with the Middle Latin, in Delmati, Durham, Darus plowed land. This word Cabet also connects it with the Albanian, Baron. Grime. In an inscription of ancient Dardania, the scholar Zef Merdita, who has recently dealt with cults in Dardania, finds a main local goddess, Dardani Sacrum. The cult of Dardania is the unified cult of the entire Great Illyrian province. The researcher emphasizes the role of this goddess, perhaps even an eponym, with attributes similar to those of the ancient health god, Aesculapius, or Hig. Andy. H.Y. Epicoric of the Dardanian land. His name was found on a marble monument near Kakarnik, on the border of Dardania and Macedonia. The name is included in the Illyrian onomastic repertoire. Mr. Murdita compares the functions of this entrance to those of Vidas, the Roman Sylvanus. Anzotics. Goddess of Liburnians with attributes of the goddess of beauty and love, Aphrodite. Her name is engraved on a monument in Old Flamona, today's Plomen. I ran away. Nymph of a river in Liburni, and in Flamona, also with attributes of Aphrodite. Lutotoxic. Again the name of a nymph of the Liburnian Treva. Latter. A nymph related to other nymphs of the Liburnian myths. Sentona. Another local nymph of the same region. Persuaded. Main HY of the Illyrian tribe of the Japards. Several votive altars were dedicated to him, which were found near the source of the privy stream near today's Bihalk. In the inscriptions, it is identified with the Roman hewn of the sea Neptune, Bindo Neptuno Sacrum. In fact, more than the sea lion, Bindi is a protector of springs and waters. Goats were sacrificed in his honor. Tharna and Vidasi. An Illyrian divine couple, which is depicted on several monuments made by the Illyrians. For votive altars with inscriptions dedicated to this couple were found in Tepusco. The names of these deities are, apparently, Illyrian names. Tharna is a goddess with attributes of Artemis, or Diana. Vidasi has the attributes of the entrance to forests, pastures and springs, of the Roman Sylvanus. The reliefs of these deities of this cultic binomial are also true works of Illyrian art, they have Illyrian clothing and a characteristic local style. That's it. This name high was found on a sacrificial altar not far from Sarajevo and is identified by its cultic function with Apollo, the inscription is from the 3rd century BC. Draconiate Draxina, Draconiate Draxina. Another pair of deities. The fact of their existence is recorded in an inscription found near Skopje. The binomial of local divine snakes should be seen in this couple, as well as the echo of the image of the metamorphosis of Cadmus and Harmonia, after death, into two snakes in the Elysian fields. Boa. Illyrian deity in the form of a snake at Epidaurus. His cult survived until the 4th century AD. The local people call this snake by this very name, Hieronymin, Vita S. Hilariones, Lib 9, Notes Quos Gentili Sermonte Bors Vocant, which the people in their own language called Boa. Nutrica. Goddess of the Northern Illyrians, protector of children. That's it. Mate Suici speaks of this revered deity in the Dardanian lands as a Deus Patrius. Mr. Murdita also connects the name Tato with the epicoric name Tato Nipple. In it he also sees the connection with the eastern deity Attis or with the cult of the Thracian knight. On the burial pillars of Durs, the name Tato as Illyrian often appears in the 3rd to 1st centuries BC. Down. Enter the dawns in Italy. His cult was seen by V. Pisani as an Illyrian cult. He concludes that the relationship determined by Frank Althemi between the Roman Hyatt Faun, Faunus, and the mythical King Dorno is the eponym of Dornia and of course after the ancients from Illyria. Lockets. With this name, Krekmeri sees the sisters of fate among the Mesouts. This is how V. Pisani also analyzes it. Other names of deities that are thought to belong to the Illyrian pantheon are Grabovi, Versobi, Orfani, 
Iria, Eurydua, Melisokyu, etc. This quick and very general cataloging of the deities of the Illyrian pantheon shows that their number is not small. Here, superior and inferior deities must be distinguished from a hierarchical point of view, at the same time deities with local influence and influence and those with general roles for Illyrian lands and things. Another problem is their temporal stratification into older and younger deities. Of course, this pantheon was not entirely unique. Within a unity, especially between the deities common to the central Illyrian lands, there is also diversity, a process that is normal and understandable, especially for the ancient times of the existence of many Illyrian tribes and all the more scattered in very wide territories. At certain times, different deities have been primary than those that have become such at other times. A very important moment in the entire history of Illyria was that of the Illyrian state, for to two centuries BC. This state and its kings also had official cults and deities. In this aspect, the red and metal couple stands out with roles and functions that are interconnected. Synchronization of Illyrian legends with Greek ones. Tolosi has expressed the opinion that Illyrian mythology has also given a lot to Greek mythology. This opinion starts from the point of view that Greek mythology itself was not simply a creation of itself, but also has a general Mediterranean character. It has the form of a kind of general ideology, in the elaboration of which the ancient Greeks definitely played a hand role first, but also the Illyrians, Thracians and other peoples have contributed to its shaping. This lens makes it possible to look objectively at the data that speak about Illyrian myths and cults. A spicy time loop for the history of the Illyrians of the coast was that of the ancient Doric colonization process which started from Corcora, Ders, Apollonia, Isa, Fari in the north etc. Greek myths and legends, spread in Illyria, have been a means of propagandizing these movements of colonists on the Illyrian coast. An interesting synchronization process has occurred here. The newcomers, with their mythological worldview, encountered local legends and myths. A part of the Greek myths had ramifications, independent developments connected here and there with the world, ethnopsychology and historical processes of the Illyrians. Since the 7th to 6th centuries BC, syncretism in mythology took off. In fact, this phenomenon must have happened earlier. The task of mythology researchers is to investigate this great common creativity of the Illyrians, who came into contact with the mythological worldview of the Greeks. In most of them, synchronized myths and legends are original creations, very important additions, that go outside the general framework of routine schemes and classical archetypes of Greek mythology. One of the most interesting troves of Illyrian Greek mythological syncretism is the trove of Epirus. In this syncretism, the receiving and giving side from both sides have had a certain dynamic in different conditions and times. Thus, the mythological beliefs of the southern Illyrians and Epirus have also contributed to many Greek legends and myths of northern Greece. The French researcher Alain Mahusier in his study dealt with the influence of Illyria and the Illyrian world in the heroic cycles and Greek legends. He expressly says that the Illyrians have influenced a number of cycles such as the The Band Cycle, the Thessalian Cycle of Argos, the Heraclean Cycle, the Cycle of the Return from Troy, the Epiro, or Molos the Sprot Cycle, the Illyrian Italic Cycle, etc. Below we will dwell on some data from ancient authors and archaeological monuments which testify to synchronized legends and myths which rightly should not be considered simply as copy, but also as creative adaptations, enriched, dictated by certain historical situations of the Illyrian world in its international relations. The Legend of Cadmus and Harmonia It is a legend that played a role in the world of the Illyrians, in the central areas of Albania, but also in the coastal area up to the north. Apollodorus recorded the Greco-Illyrian version of the legend in question. Cadmus, founder of Thebes in Boeti, son of Agenor, king of the Phoenicians, who married Harmonia, daughter of the god of war, Ars, and Aphrodite. According to an oracle, he went to the Illyrians and became their king. In this new ethnic environment, a son was born to them who was named Illy, from which all the Illyrians were nicknamed. After death, Cadmus and Harmonia were also transformed into divine serpents. Pausanias, Descriptio Grecia, Book 9, 5, adds that, 
when Cadmus emigrated to the Illyrians, to those Illyrians, who were called angels, he was followed by his son, Polydorus. In fact, Polydori plays no part in the English version of the Cadmus myth. On the contrary, the one who comes to the center of attention is Illyri. Another testimony of Stephen the Byzantine adds that in the north, the city of Illyria called Butho, bears this name because Cadmus crossed the road to Illyria riding a pair of oxen. Also, others say that Cadmus called it after the name of the Egyptian city Bututas, which became Butho. This name is related to the name of the ox, which in ancient Greek is called Bous. This type of etymological explanation also served one of the legends about the name of Betrint in the south. And according to Stefan Byzantini, Cadmus and Harmonia were buried between the rivers Drill, Drin, and Lau, unidentified. Cadmi and Harmonia are also nicknamed Dirahenoi, to show their connection with the lands of Durs, or the province of Durahia, which Bib Sequestri also talks about. Christopher the Copt in one of his epigrams adds that the ancient city of Linides was built by Cadmus. Calamachus, Skylax, Philarchus, Ateneus, Nucadri give other details about the above legend. In them, it is said that stone memorials were also erected for this legendary couple after their death, which are found in several geographical points, such as, in Ryzen, in the city of Kylakis, unidentified, on the banks of Naretva, near Durs. A river in the field of Kestrina in Thesproti also bears the name of Cadmus. The field of Kestrina took its name from Kestrin, son of Eleni of Priam of Troy. The legend of Cadmus and Harmonia was not connected to the angels by chance. The ancient authors record the military excursions of the angels against the northern Greeks, who also plundered Thebes itself, which was also nicknamed Cadmea. In fact, this moment has caused the angels to come into contact with the Greek legend of the city. Even the Torlans are mentioned for destructive excursions to Delphi, where they definitely came into contact with the Greek mythological world. These movements from north to south of the Illyrians, of the most important tribes towards the Greek world, are not passive, but active relations of the Illyrian world with its neighbors. So, this fact is important to understand, that the Greek legends were not imposed by force, but were taken by the Illyrians themselves, who developed them according to the events and their own mythological concepts. Cadmus is a character of the The Band Cycle. The legend of Amphion and Zeti, mythological brothers who built the walls of the city of Durs, is connected with this cycle. This legend is close to the Orphic theme, which was written in an inscription carved on the walls of the city in question and mentioned by Anna Komnena in the 11th century. Amphion was king of Thebes, son of Zeus, famous musician. It is the counterpart of Orpheus. Zeti, his brother, was a participant in the famous expedition of the Argonauts, Zeti was winged, that is, a man who flew, this special attribute of his. Amphion and Zeti, mythological builders of Durs, have created a local tradition. The researcher K. Luca has found that this legend has traces in other geographical points of the Albanian territory. Did the legend of Cadmus and Harmony meet with the legend of Amphion and Zeus? The first legend left more evidence among the Illyrians, it lived longer. We add that other actions are related to the The Band Cycle. A variant says that Cadmus and Harmonia, accompanied by Epirus, the son of Echion of Thebes, went to Caone, where Epirus died and gave Epirus its name. Agavia, one of the daughters of Cadmus of Harmony, became the wife of the king of the angels Luca Thursi. The The Band Cycle also includes the legend of Laodam and Betos. Laodam is the son of the fifth generation, descended from Polydorus, the son of Cadmus, who fled to Illyria. Likewise, after the death of the Theban hero Amphirai, his charioteer, Batoja, comes to Illyria and founds the city of Harpia. Stefan Byzantini in his Harpian lexicon calls it, the city of Illyria. The legend of the Argonauts. It is one of the greatest legends of Greek mythology. Some actions of the Argonauts are detailed in the Illyrian stories. An early tradition says that the Argonauts, on their way back from Cochlida, from the banks of the Pontus, sailed down the Danube and, crossing the Balkan Peninsula, went north to the Adriatic Sea. So writes Apollo of Rhodes in the 3rd century BC. So writes Apollo of Rhodes in the 3rd century BC. 
Some ancient scholars have connected the name of the city of Olsin, Olsinius, Olsinio, with the name of the Calchidians, who followed the Argonauts' ship. Recently, the Kosovar researcher Rusti Ushaku has suggested that the name of Olsin should actually be related to the Homeric toponym Dalkian, which is mentioned in Odyssey, episode 19, verse 293. Thus, this toponym is one of the oldest of the Illyrian names, dating back to a very distant time. The legend of the creation of the city by the Calchidians is still of the Homeric cycle, not only as an event in general, but with a local branch to name an Illyrian coastal city at a pretty great distance from the Greek islands, or Troy. Apollodorus in his story says, that, the Calchidians who had been sent to follow the ship, Argo, and who had not been able to reach her, settled some in the Acrocoron mountains and others, who threw themselves on the shores of Illyria, settled in the Absertides islands, Still others went as far as the island of the Phaeacians, it is about Corfu, my MZ note, where they found the Argonauts. Regarding the Absertide Islands, there is a special legend about their name, which was preserved by Stefan Byzantini. He says that the islands in question are in Odria, near the city, which has named the whole sea and which once belonged to the Torlantians, my note MZ, they were named after Absertes, the son of Aetis, king of Colchis and brother of Medes who he was treacherously killed by his sister, who dismembered him and threw him into the sea, so that the follower Colchidas, collecting his pieces, would be delayed and could not catch the ship, Argo, which he was very close to. Artemidorus named Absurti occupies only one island in its mouth. In fact, a cycle of islands bore this name. This legend of the Illyrian coast is typical to explain the phenomenon of the existence of the islands and their legendary and simultaneously geographical name. Aristotle, De Mirabilibus Auscultationibus, 836 b. 81, writes about another naming legend, that of the Electride Islands in the Dalmatian Adriatic, where there were many poplars from which amber was extracted, with which the local inhabitants traded with Hellas. Daedalus came, conquered the islands and put his face on one, and on the other the face of his son, Icarus. Then, after the Pelasgians tamed him, who also destroyed the city of Argos, Daedalus fled and settled in the island of Icarus. This is the legend of the prototype of the mythical representative of ancient art, Daedalus, and his son, Icarus. This is actually an Attic myth, but the topography of its spread is extremely wide, in Egypt, Sicily, Crete, Illyria. Daedalus is the legendary sculptor, to whom a certain style of archaic sculpture is also attributed, Cretan, Daedalic style. Works of this style have also been documented in Durs. We have a branch of the saga of Daedalus on the Illyrian coast, even the islands are designated, where he made two sculptural works, the self-portrait and the portrait of his son. It is the myth of artists, architects, ancient mechanics, that is, of a prominent cultural, intellectual and artistic world, which has reflected on the Illyrian coast, where it has found understanding, affinity, closeness, embrace. In connection with the maritime legend of the Argonauts on the Illyrian coast of the Adriatic and the Ionian, the cults of the mythological brothers Dioscuri, who in the small bay of Gramata had a place of worship in nature, where many exphoto inscriptions addressed to them from weather sailors for many centuries, without forgetting that the symbols of the Dioscuri also appear on the ancient coins of Durs, in a sculpture found in Baldusk, near Tirana, where the Dioscuri are shown in there appearance as peacemakers and knights, etc. With the ship Argo, the Homeric tradition is also connected with the cult of the sacred oak of Molossian Dodona, with oracle attributes. From a piece of this oak, Jason and his fellow sailors carved the ship's base for omens. And with Dodona, according to the legends of the the Sprots and Molossians, there is also the legend of the copper vessel of Dodona, for which Strabo himself gives us a unique testimony, Geographica, Book 7, 3, 4. This copper vessel, Strabo notes, was inside the shrine and had a statue on it, holding in its hand a copper whip, a gift from the Corcurus. The whip was triple, in the form of a chain. It consisted of three strings which, when shaken by the winds, they struck the copper vessel and produced sound so long that from the beginning to the end of the sound one could count up to four hundred. From this came the saying, the whip of Corcurus. The passage of the legend is related to the 9th to 7th centuries BC. In this period of time, the Illyrian Liburnians were the masters of Corcora. 
So, the vessel of the Corcyras is related to the Liburnians, to the Illyrian sailors, even more so because this vessel, as well as the copper statue of the archaic time, when mainly copper sculptures were made, were donated to an Illyrian environment of the Molossians and the Sprouts. Ancient authors mention in their travelogues such names as Sea of Thesprosia, Sea of Molossia. Even Homer's statement that the fortune tellers of Dodona do not wash their feet must be understood in the context of a cultic ceremonial of myths which are related to the miraculous power of water, whether fresh or sea. The fact that the ship, Argo, necessarily carries a figure carved on a piece of Dodona oak means that this oak was associated with the water cult in general. Likewise, the legend of Epirota of Betrint is important for the legend of the Argonauts, which says that Media, after the marriage of Jason with Kreutzer, after carrying out her cruel act of revenge, died and was buried in Betrint. This version of the Tomb of Medes in Illyrian land differs from the Greek one, which Euripides wrote in his famous tragedy. It is interesting to investigate why the Colchids, according to the legendary Illyrian stories, settled in the coastal areas from Odria, Alkin to Acrocoron, and that Apserti and Media, who were not ethnically Greek, at their places of legendary name preservation in the Illyrian areas. Some local legends record the Colchidans coming even to the angels, near the tomb of Cadmus and Harmonia, in them it is said that they also settled in Amantia, Oricum, up to and around Apollonia. In fact, the Argonautology survives mythically until the Middle Ages, and there are even some documents until the 16th century, which refer to the myth of Media in Ulsinge in its original popular form. In an anonymous report from 1571 in Dalmatian Italian, Ulkin and the northern Albanian area are mentioned, it is noted that Ulkin was called in Latin Cleninium, or Calilium, because the first founders of the city came from the Colchis of northern Black Sea origin, when they, under their captain Absertin, came to take revenge against Media. Centuries ago, Pliny, Hist National Lib. 3, Chapter 27, says, that Ulkin, previously called Coking, was founded by the Colchi. The conventionality of this myth is clear but it is interesting that in the 16th century the humanistic spirit revived the presence of this ancient myth once again in the consciousness of the inhabitants according to the principle of the revival of classical pagan antiquity at the end of the medieval Christian era. The figure of media in the document of 1571, which we mentioned above, appears multiplied, as an interweaving with the figures of medieval magicians, as a kind of Faustian motif. Thus, in these documents about Ulkin, it is emphasized that, even today, 15 miles away from Ulkin, the traces and foundations of the 360 churches of this city, which was the first refuge of the exiled media, after the ugly death she caused to her children, can be seen. Near this city there are lakes, caves, salty springs and there is the mountain of Leesinger, very rough, filled with medicinal herbs and with the dwellings of witches. This ancient myth has developed so much from the local point of view that the anonymous narrator of the document in question, when he talks about the Albanian residents of Ulsinj, does not forget to highlight the fact that Albanians do not like foreigners, they even take a stand against them scornful. Some say it is derived from the robbery of Medes, for they descend, are descended from Absertes and Calalides, who, following Jason of Medes, to avenge the disgrace he had done them, stayed here and founded this city, harboring a grudge not only against Jason of the Argonauts, but also against all the foreigners who sprang from them. Aristotle tells the legend of Diomede in the northern Adriatic, on the island of Diomedia in the Adriatic, they say, there is an admirable and holy temple of Diomede. Large birds with very long, wide and strong beaks fly around him. When the Hellenes come here, they sit still, when barbarians, meaning, Illyrians, who live nearby come, they fly over their heads, attack them with their claws and beaks, they say that these birds were once friends of Diomes who turned into birds after killing the leader of theirs Diomes, after the sinking of the ship by Aeneas, the king of those barbarian tribes. The legend is important, that it speaks of a match between the Illyrians and the Greeks. It is, apparently, about a conflict which should be seen connected with the introduction of Greek colonists in the Adriatic islands, the Illyrians objected. The Battle of the Illyrians, about 10,000 Illyrians with ships, who attacked the Greek colonists located on the island of Far is also known. Aristotle's legend of Diomedes is older than this event, but it reflects another event about the Illyrian-Greek conflicts, probably from the time when the Liburnians had created a thalassocracy, 
despotism which went against the interests of the Greeks. About Diomed there is also a branch of the legend that Skymi mentions in his work in the verses Orbis Descriptio, verses 428 to 433, this land has a lake big, which they call Linid a very close is an island, where it is said that Diomed came and died therefore this island is called Diomedia. This variant is a bit strange and constitutes a geographical inaccuracy. In fact, the Illyrianized Greek myth of Diomedes has ascended as far as the northern Adriatic, in Dalmatia. The variant of Skymi, which connects it with Lake Linid, is probably an interweaving of the legend of the Illyrians of the northern Adriatic with some legend of the Enkeli Illyrians of Linid, who are protagonists of the cycle of legends of Cadmus and Harmonia, with more the ban influences rather than the Trojan cycle, the heroes returning from Troy, etc. Strabo records interesting details about the mythical hero Diomedes in the Epirotilirian cities, behind Ambracia is Argo of the Amphilochians, built by Alcmion and his sons. Ephorus says that Alcmion, after the Epigone's expedition against Thebes, was invited by Diomedes to come with him to Aetolia and to rule together here and in Acarnania when Agamemnon called them to the war against Troy. Diomedes went and Alcmion stayed in Acarnania and built the Argon, which he called Argo of Amphilochia. Epirotes are also Amphilos. The myth of Diomedes appears, therefore, in a wide space from northern Illyria to southern Illyria in the Illyrian Epirote region. It is connected with the years of this land, with the founding of cities, with seas, with lakes, islands, with going to Troy, with his return from it and with his death, not in the literal Greek years, but in the Illyrian years. The theme of the Trojan War, of the journeys of the heroes there, but also of the Trojan heroes in their tiring and long exodus in different seas and geographical areas until they settled in Italic Latium, has been popular in the cities of the Illyrian coast, but also in the interior of the Illyrian territory in general. This can also be seen in the content and Homeric mythological motifs of vases with black and red figures found in Durs, Apolloni, Betrint, etc. In them there are motifs of the epics of Troy and the wanderings of the Achaean heroes in the distant, barbarian, areas. Other legends speak of Aeneas of Troy and his travels in the Epirote land and in Betrint. Let's dwell on this point. Virgil in his narrative epic, Aeneid, gives us in detail something of these legends, which have a much older birth than the century of the poet. According to him, the very name of the province of Caonia comes from the name of the Trojan hero Caoni. When Aeneas came to Betrint, he saw in it a copy of Troy, it was made, reproduced Troy itself that was destroyed, to survive in another foreign land far from the shores of Asia Minor. Even Virgil describes the city, the towers, the gates, calling them by Trojan names, for example the verses about the gate, Ski. Dionysius of Halicarnassus notes that, the arrival of the Trojans in Betrint is also evidenced by a hill called Troy. Aeneas at Betrint met Andromache, who was paying homage to the cenotaph, empty, symbolic tomb, of Hector. She was married to Hector's brother. Eleni in Betrint who became king of Caonia after the death of Neoptolemus, son of Achilles. From Betrint Aeneas left for the Italian peninsula. Dionysius of Halicarnassus gives a detail in the legend, the next city on the Ionian coast, Anhesme, was called Anchiesme, after the name of Aeneas' father, Anchises. Two Crees of Sisychus gives the legend of the founding of Betrint by Eleni, son of Priam of Troy, who, after the destruction of Troy, came to Epirus, and, being a sacrifice to the gods, escaped the sacrificial ox, and, where it died, Eleni built the city. Another legend, recorded by Stephen the Byzantine, says that the name of the city is related to the name of the ox, Booz. A fourth legend connects the name of Betrint with the meaning, city drowned in water. This etymology explains the phenomenon of Braticism that has changed the appearance of this area. The poet Lescius of Lesbos, 7th century BC, wrote that Aeneas, when Troy fell, was captured by the Achaeans and handed over to Neoptolemus, who took him to Thessaly and Epirus, while Dionys of Halicarnassus records that Aeneas also went to Dodona, the capital of Epirus, of the Molossians, where he donated many bronze vases with ancient inscriptions that are still today. The echo of the ancient legends of Betrant is also brought by the poet Abbot P. Burra, participant in the Four Crusade, year 1204, in his work, Courage, dedicated to King Henry II in a medieval Betrant legend. 
most of the above myths and legends should be framed in the Epiro cycle. The Herculean cycle of the Illyrians. Such a completely strange and paradoxical branching of the ancient Greek myth in the Albanian Middle Ages is a local phenomenon to use even a fantasist genealogy, although of a very old tradition, only for the residents of Ulsinj to argue the necessity of preserving freedom of their independence from foreign enemies, that is, to justify even in the form of a mythological, humanistic propaganda the right of survival. In the Middle Ages, media's name also explained another important coastal toponym in the Adriatic, that of Shenjin, named on the maps of the 15 to 17 centuries as Shenjinii Medua, which got this name from media who stopped here. The legend of the return from Troy. The return of the heroes from the Trojan War, their different paths after the final destruction of the city are mentioned in a number of legends which have taken on a local appearance. The epic of the Trojan War has shocked not only the imagination of the Greeks, but also of the other Mediterranean peoples of the Balkan Peninsula. In the Trojan War, according to Homer, the Illyrian tribes also participated, such as, the Paiwans, the Dardanians, etc. Pausanias testifies to a monument in relief made by Lycus, the son of Myron, in the 5th century BC. The inhabitants of Apollonia, on the coast of the Illyrian Sea, had ordered it, accompanied by an epigram of four verses. The relief was elaborated according to a subject of mythological narration of persons and events from the Trojan War. This monument was placed in Olympus as ex voto and was discovered by the excavations of the 20th century. It is thought by Prashnikeri that such a similar monument will have been in the commissioning city, that is, in Apollonia. Pausanias is the first to describe the figures of the monument, near the so-called Hippodamus is placed a marble plinth in the shape of a semicircle where are the figures of Zeus, the Tees and Himera, who pray to him for sons. All these are in the middle of the foundation. At one end and at the other end, Achilles and Memnon are depicted as fighting. There are barbarians and Hellenes facing each other, Odysseus and Eleni, since both of them gained fame in their army for their knowledge, Menelaus with Alexander because of their enmity against each other, Arjux of Telamon and Daphobus. In this relief of much of the art of the classical period has an evocation of the Homeric theme, generally of the main myths, connected with the name of Troy. The Apollonians, who commissioned the monument, were well aware of this mythological mindset on their shores of southern Illyria. In the poetic inscription, they have noted another legend, of course of the country, that of the founding of their city by Phoebe the Long-Haired. Local legends of the main characters of the Trojan War have survived in abundance. Odysseus, the main character of the homonymous poem, after the destruction of Troy, comes to Corcora, where he meets the local king of the fabulous Phaeacians, Alcinoi, and his daughter Nausicaa. Homer himself described this. The Phaeacians are Illyrians. Apollodorus also tells the other legend of Odysseus in Epirus, after making a sacrifice in honor of Hades, Persephone and Thyresia, passing through Epirus on foot, he reached the Thesprotian Illyrians and, according to the Thyresia's oracle, appeased Poseidon's anger with sacrifices. Callidicus, who was at that time the queen of the Thesprots, asked him to stay, promising him the kingdom. Odysseus was born with Polypoeta. He, Odysseus, reigned with Callidica of the Thesprots and defeated the army of the periodicals in war. Yes, Apollodorus also pointed out the legend of Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles, who, according to Plutarch's testimony, was revered in Epirus and was called Ochil Aspetai. In this epithet, philologists have seen the Albanian word quick, a well known attribute of this legendary character. Apollodorus writes Neoptolemus, according to the order of the Tees, went with Eleni to the Molossians, buried Phoenicus, who died on the way, and, after winning a battle, became king of the Molossians and gave birth to Molossians from Andro Marsh. And Eleni built in Molossians a city and lived there. Neoptolemus gave him his mother, Didymena, as his wife. A legend told by Skylac speaks of the building of Oricum near the Acrocarans by the Eubians, who were swept here by the waves, on their way back from Troy. Other sayings, see Pausanias, call Elephanor the leader of the Eubians for their settlement in Apollonia, in the city of Thronian, Amantia. Neoptolemus of Achilles enjoyed a special honor in the city of Bylis. On the ancient coins of the city, the face of this hero is shown as the ancestor of its inhabitants. 
The well-known numismatist H. Saker has also studied a variant of the city's coin where Neoptolemus is not in a combat appearance, with a helmet, etc., but as a young man, who aspires to a life in peace, quite different from the mythological scheme of defiguration of this hero from Greek mythology. Therefore, Saker says, that in this special appearance of Neoptolemus, we must distinguish a distant ancestor of the Bilin Illyrians, an ancestor of local speakers. Another Trojan hero, Diams, also has a mythological life on the shores of northern Illyria. Hercules is a very popular hero, with multiple honors among all the Mediterranean peoples. He is a hero of the plebeian type, around whom a popular cult has been created that has enjoyed the sympathy of the popular masses. His bravery is related to a pronounced heroism of mythology in general, with sacrifices for the benefit of people, of justice. In this sense, Hercules is a brother, although not as high in the hierarchy, to Prometheus. Hercules was also greatly worshipped by the Illyrians. An archaic style relief from the 6th century BC was discovered near Durs and served as an exvoto for a temple. Pausanias mentions another monument of a treasury, cult building, consecrated by the Epidamnesians on Olympus, where the relief represented the world held by Atlas and Hercules, as well as the tree of the Hesperides with the serpent coiled around the tree. All these were made of cedar wood from Thucleus, the son of Hegeli. That he made the world together with his son, says the inscription found there. The thesaurus of Epidamnus was constructed by Pyrrhus and his sons Lacrates and Hermon. In the above monument one of the feats of Hercules is given, the eleventh feat. It should be added to these facts that in the old legend of Durs, which is older than the 7th century BC, in its genesis, in an addition from a second time, Hercules also appears on the scene in Durs, who helps the sons of the mythical king of Dira, but kills John by mistake in the war, which saddens him greatly. The later Dira has have kept Hercules as a co-founder of the city of Heraclion. Its symbols are also in bilateral numismatics. Apollodorus also preserves a legend of Hercules passing to the Illyrians when he went to the river Herodon, where he saw the nymphs, the daughters of Zeus and the Miss. A myth, transmitted to us by Scolaxi, from the 6th century BC, says that Hillai, the son of Hercules, was the name of the Hillae, a barbarian Illyrian tribe, who lived in the north of the Adriatic, on a peninsula smaller than that of the Peloponnese. In 1924 Ulrich von Velamovich, Mellendorf created the theory that the Hillii, one of the three tribes of Sparta, had Illyrian origin and lived in the geographical space between Skradin and Troja today, in Dalmatia. Later they moved to the south. According to him, this Illyrian tribe played a role in Illyria even during the period of Greek colonization, where mainly the Hans were the initiators of the Illyrian coast. Related to the Herculean cycle are also some legends, related to Bellorophon, the son of Glaucus, king of Corinth, who killed Himera. It is also represented by a relief from ancient Durs. From the myth of Meliga, with the subject of the heroism of this hero, who killed the boar of Caledon, the relief of the outer pages of a Durs sarcophagus, 2nd century, etc. was made. Their legends are close to those of Heracles. During antiquity, the myth of the Amazon was widespread in Durs and Apollonia. In a monument of Apollonia, the Amazons represent the Illyrians, which is also shown by the symbol of a typical Illyrian shield. Similarly, in a painted page from the 5th century BC, which is now in the Museum of Bologna, the fight between the Greeks and the Amazons, who have the well-known and typical Illyrian helmets on their heads, is given. In these cases, the Amazons, which classical mythology makes to originate from Asia Minor or the Caucasus, are given an Illyrian ethnic origin. This definitely brings a dominant mythological opinion and view of the time, which is also related to the origin of the Illyrians themselves, especially to give the contradictions between the new colonists and the natives. The Herculean cycle survives until the Albanian Middle Ages, even at the borders of the European Renaissance. A typical example of this is Murin Barlet's notes in his masterpiece dedicated to Jurgurt Kastriot, Skenderbir. There, Barletti, as a humanist, also deals with the issue of the ethnogenesis of Arbas, that is, of Albanians, among others, relying on ancient authors, whom he knew well, as well as on classical mythology, stopping surprisingly also on those branches of ancient Greek and Mediterranean myths that had special, sometimes even original and independent developments in the old ancient land. 
he also talks about the events of the well-known Herculean cycle in relation to the ancestors of the Albanians. Barletti connects the genesis, the genesis of the Albanians of his time with the ancient Albanians, but he does so according to an unscientific and inaccurate concept of time, he thinks that they come from the weathered Albanians of Italy, who had also lived in a part of Colchis. It is interesting to note that, for Barletti, the Albanians of the Illyrian land came from very ancient mythological times, as early as the period of the myth of the Argonauts of the Archaic Era, then they were also distributed in Italy, having their main station in Illyria, the lands of Albania. Barlet indirectly echoes the myth of Jason and Medes, as well as the death of Absurti, the Calchidians of Ulcin up to Acro Caron and Corcora. Citing Trog Pompey, the historian of the time of Augustus, Barletti thinks that the Albanians are connected to one of the heroic actions of Hercules, that of kidnapping the cows of Gerion in Epirus and taking this irrepressible, destructive, death-bringing herd to Mount Alban, where they grazed and were fascinated by the rich pastures. The fact that the origin of the Albanians in the works of a humanist like Barletti is connected with the heroic figure of Hercules shows that classical mythology at this point in time was a more preferred, more intellectual and more progressive reference system than the reference with my elements already more archaic and unacceptable, such as those of the evangelical world of feudalized and extremely regressive Christianity. Hercules is one of the most democratic figures of classical mythology, beloved demigod, very popular at times among the common people and the poor. On the other hand, in addition to this fact, with the name of Hercules we also address the admiration of a symbol of bravery, of triumph over everything, over all obstacles, repressions, indignities, etc. It is self-evident that in this way Barletti in the figure of Hercules also refers to the great historical figure of Skenderbeard, to whom he often completes the portrait with the meaningful epithet, Herculean. On the other hand, in his writings, Barletti uses such expressions of a humanistic character, such as, for Hercules, at the time when it was the norm that he possessed in all the meanings of rhetoric, literature, culture, related to the Christian church, the expression exclamatory, for Christ. Some conclusions. The mythological material is, as can be seen, many and varied. In fact, in reality it is much larger than it appears in this paper. Of course, in order to get deeper into the Illyrian cult world, we must also talk about the problems of the cult architecture, the special ceremonial places of the Illyrian cults, their iconography, etc. In the 1st to 3rd centuries AD the cults of Illyrian myths had a revival. We have a part of the inscriptions that talk about the names of the Illyrian deities from this period. In the IVV centuries we have an Illyrian, go to Damarung, meaning, the death of the gods. The intervention of Christianity eliminated ancient Illyrian polytheism, as well as polytheism in general. We are mentioning two facts of this worldwide disintegration in the plane of the Illyrian cult. The first fact. In Epidaurus, in Dalmatia, in 365, came Hilarion, who killed the native Illyrian deity in the form of a snake called Boa. The scientific explanation of this legendary event was first made by Evans, who saw the personification of the victory of Christianity over ancient pagan beliefs, how interesting is this victory of Christianity over the worship of Cadmus and Aesculapius, the serpent of the early days of Epidauri. How suggestive is this connection of local mythology with the new religion? Second fact, Plutarch tells a legend about an event that happened in the area of Betrint. He says that Epitus, the father of the orator Emiliani, told that once, sailing towards Italy, a ship full of people approached the coast of Epirus near Betrint. Suddenly a voice was heard saying, when you reach Lake Pelode, today's Lake Betrint, announce that the great Pan is dead. Epitus added, that all who heard this voice were terrified. When the ship approached the lake, its pilot called out in a loud voice that the great Pan was dead. As he spoke thus, there were loud cries, not of one man, but of many beings, howling together. The news also spread in Rome. Emperor Tiber ordered an investigation to find out the meaning of such a shocking event. This legend also speaks of the death and epilogue of polytheism, which was giving way to Christianity, which at the time of Tiberius had taken off, despite the furious persecutions by the Roman state and emperor. 
the lament for the great Pan, the hewn of the flocks with his widespread and ancient cult of the Molossians, the Kaans, etc., was the lament for an entire era of human history that was coming to an end. These two facts are a terminus antiquem for the triumph of the new monotheistic religion. However, polytheism had in many cases its survival in different countries and areas. They are often the expression of a symbiosis or of local spiritual traditions. But here we have another topic of study, in itself, which requires a separate writing and which is beyond the scope of this article. Concluding, we emphasize that Illyrian mythology has been a living spiritual, historical reality. It is an important proof to prove the special ethnicity and originality of the old Illyrian people, ancestors of the Albanians. Illyrian mythology, like that of the genuine Illyrian pantheon, as well as the synchronized myths and legends speak of the creative abilities of the Illyrians in the sphere of worldview and intellectual and spiritual life, of a representative culture of the Illyrians in confrontations with the world of other neighboring peoples. Illyrian mythology enriches the general mythological picture of the Mediterranean and European world. Moikam Zeko, Aspects of Illyrian Mythology, Ders, 1989